Welcome students. This is history chapter 4 Vedic civilization. The Vedas are the earliest literary compositions in India. Ved means knowledge. It is derived from the Sanskrit root vid which means to know. There are four Vedas. They are Rig, Sam, Yajur, and Athar. I repeat this. There are four Vedas: Rig Ved, Sam Ved, Yajur Ved, and Athar Ved. Arising out of the Vedas are other literary compositions called the Brahmanas. Aranyakas, Upanishads, the Puranas, and the epics Ramayan and Mahabharat. Since these four names are very important, you should remember them. The names: the Indian epics Ramayan and Mahabharat. The entire literature based on the Vedas is referred. as vedic literature we see this again the entire literature based on the vedas is referred to as vedic literature in indian history the period 1500 bc to 600 bc is called the vedic age as most of the information about this period is derived from vedic literature during the vedic age a people called the aryas settled in north india the aryas are so called because they spoke one of several aryan languages that probably originated in central asia india was named bharat varsh after a powerful aryan tribe called bharat we see this again india was named bharat varsh after a powerful aryan tribe called bharat the vedic age can be divided into the early vedic period that is between 1500 bc 2000 bc and the later vedic period that is between 1000 bc and 600 bc we should remember this the two divisions of vedic age are early vedic period between 1500 bc 2000 bc and the later vedic period between 1000 bc to 600 bc the early vedic people live in the region called saptasindhu which consists of modern haryana and undivided punjab it was watered by seven rivers the indus chhelam chenab ravi vyas satluj and saraswati the saraswati has dried up since but we should see the names of the rivers again the rivers were indus chhelam chenab ravi vyas satluj and saraswati the early vedic age is also called the rig vedic age because the rig ved was composed at this time 
The Rig Veda is a very valuable source of information on the early Vedic period. It is a collection of 1,028 hymns and prayers in praise of the gods. Initially, it was not in written form, but was passed on orally. Knowledge passed on in this way is known as Shruti. In the early Vedic period, the Aryans were divided into tribal groups. Each group lived in a village or gram. The tribes were cattle breeders. They fought wars over the possession of cattle and grazing ground. The tribal chief was called Rajan. He led his tribe. in war and maintained law and order he received a bali or voluntary donation for his services the rajan was assisted by the commander in chief or the senani the chief priest or purohit and the village headman gramani he consulted his subjects on important matters he did this through the sabha a small committee of select village elders and the samiti that is the general assembly we now go on to the occupation growing crops and rearing cattle were the main occupations of the early aryans the aryans grew wheat barley and rice the cow was central to their life a man's honor was measured in terms of the number of cows he possessed the cow was also a unit of barter the aryans used horses and chariots in war and peace in the later vedic period the horse became an important religious symbol the rigveda mentions that there were craftsmen such as carpenters chariot makers weavers leather workers and potters the usual pastimes of the aryans were chariot racing hunting gambling music and dancing musical instruments such as flute lute harp drum and cymbals were used let's see all these points again the early vedic or rig vedic period extended from 1500 bc to 1000 bc the aryans settled in the sapta sindhu region and composed the rig veda during this time the aryans lived in tribal groups each tribe lived in a village or gram the chief of the tribe was called rajan 
He ruled. He ruled with the help of the Purohit, the Senani, and the tribal assemblies called Sabha and Committee. Growing crops and cattle breeding were the main occupation. Crafts like carpentry, chariot making, weaving, and leather working were prevalent. Chariot racing, gambling, music and dancing were popular pastimes. We now move on to the social life of the Aryan. A joint family was the smallest unit of a village. It was headed by the senior most male member or patriarch. This system is called the patriarchal system. Women held a position of respect in society. They could attend assemblies and offer prayers. There have been in fact two very renowned women philosophers of this time. Their names are Gandhi and Maitri. Next we read about the word. At first, society was divided on the basis of word or skin color. The fair skinned Aryans considered the dark skinned Nasas inferior. The Dasas were the original inhabitants of the region where the Aryans settled. Gradually, a system of social division based on occupation came into being. This developed into the caste system and words started meaning caste. The four castes, from the highest to the lowest, were Brahmas, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra. Let's repeat this again. The four castes, from the highest to the lowest order, were Brahmas, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra. The priests who looked after religious matters and recited prayers were Brahmins. The kings and the warriors who protected the tribe from harm were Kshatriya. The Vaishya were mainly farmers and craftsmen. Rasas and those Aryans who disobeyed social rules who belonged the Shudra caste. However, we should keep this in mind that there was no caste rigidity and the castes were not hierarchical in the Rig There was no caste rigidity and the castes were not hierarchical. That means a person could easily change his caste on the basis of his occupation. For example, the son of a Vaishya who studied scriptures and took up the job of a priest could easily be called a Brahman, whereas the father would remain a Vaishya. Now, the religious belief of Rig Vedic Aryans. In the beginning, the Aryans worshipped the forces of nature such as Prithvi, that is earth, Agni, that is fire, Vayu, that is wind, Indra, that is rain, Surya, that is sun, and Varun, that is sky. Their most important god was Indra. Keep this in mind. 
that the most important god of Rig Vedic Aryas was Indra. There were no idols. Prayers were chanted in open air. Rituals were simple. Fire was an important part of such rituals. Let's see these two points again. Social divisions based on occupation develop into the caste system. Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra were the four castes. However, there was no caste rigidity and the castes were not hierarchical. The Rig Vedic Aryas worshipped various forces of nature such as Prithvi, that is earth, Agni, that is fire, Vayu, Indra, Surya, and Varun. Their most important god was Indra. There were no idols, prayers were chanted in open air, rituals were simple, fire was an important part of such rituals. Now, we come to a later Vedic period. In the beginning of the later Vedic period, the Aryans learned the use of iron. They now moved towards Kurukshetra and Hastinapur on the bank of the river Yamuna. The use of iron tools enabled them to clear the dense jungle of the region. From here, the Aryans spread along the northern Gangetic plain. The other three Vedas, namely the Samved, the Yajurved, and Atharvaved, were composed during this period. Towards the end of the later Vedic period, that is around 600 BC, the Aryans spread from the Ganga Yamuna Swab to Koshal in Uttar Pradesh and Videhu in North Bihar. We now reach the political life. The king was the supreme commander of the army as well as the chief justice of his kingdom. His prestige depended on the extent of the area he controlled. He adopted lofty titles like Samra and Maharaja Dhiraj. He performed yagas or sacrifices like Rajasriya to gain more power and Ashwamedh to expand his kingdom. As kingdoms grew larger, kings became more powerful. The Purohit's position rose in importance as he performed the ritual. The Sabhas and Samiti lost their importance. They were dominated by the Brahmins and princes. At the village level, the village assembly carried on the administration. Women's position. Women were treated well and their presence was essential in religious ceremonies. Women of the upper classes even received education, but in general, women were considered to be inferior to men and occupied a lower position in society. And also, the women were no longer allowed to attend uh, the sabhas and samiti. Social division, with increasing emphasis on rituals and sacrifices, the Brahmins came to occupy a very high position in society. 
the Kshatriya on many occasions try to assert their superiority over the Brahmins. In due course, however, the Brahmins and Kshatriya cooperated in ruling society. Towards the end of the later Vedic period, many Vaishyas who were originally farmers shifted their occupation to trade and craft. The Shudras were now engaged in the cultivation of plants and also in menial jobs. They were deprived of many of the privileges enjoyed by the upper caste. By the end of the later Vedic period, the caste system had become rigid and hereditary. New subcasts emerged as new occupations came into existence. The occupations of the people. Agriculture remained the key means of livelihood. Around 1000 BC, the Vedic people learned to use iron. The use of iron produce better weapons and heavier agricultural implements like iron plow. The later Vedic period saw improvements in crafts like weaving, leather working, pot making, carpentry and jewelry making. Early Vedic amusements like dancing, singing, racing and gathering were still popular. The religious beliefs of the people. The early Vedic gods, Indra, Varun, and Agni lost their importance. They were replaced by the trinity of gods, Prajapati, that is Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, and Shiv, the destroyer. Hinduism as it exists today began to take shape in this period. Sacrifice assumed great importance and religious worship became very complex. In the education system, the Gurukul system was prevalent at that time. There, boys used to go to Gurukul while the girls were educated at home. Let's see all these points again of the later Vedic period. The later Vedic period extended from 1000 BC to 600 BC. The Aryans learned the use of iron and shifted from the Sapta Sindhu to the upper Gangetic Basin. The Atharva Vedas Yajur Ved and Sam Ved, as well as the Ramayana, Mahabharat, and parts of the Puranas were composed. The king became more powerful to establish his authority. He performed sacrifices and rituals. The Sabha and Samiti declined in importance. Well, Women's position declined and they were no longer allowed to attend Sabha and Samiti meetings. Social divisions became more rigid. Many Vaishyas who were cultivators now took to trade and crafts. New crafts emerged. New gods replaced the old ones. Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiv became important gods. Worship meant prayers accompanied by elaborate rituals and sacrifices. Boys were taught at Gurukul and girls at home. 